Welcome to Tales of Honor Podcast, a podcast dedicated to telling the true stories of the Congressional Medal of Honor. Everyone and welcome back to another episode of Tales of Honor podcast. I'm your host Christoph Ambrosch, and today's episode is episode 94. We're on that road to 100. We're actually on that road to 3,000, but uh, one milestone at a time, I guess. Uh, today's episode is going back to the Korean War, and this is going to be the first of the Korean War recipients. Uh, we're going to do this all of May and all of June, so the Korean War will take us to the end of June. Obviously, there's more than that. We'll come back to them at other dates, and uh, but I, w- I like to do little two-month sections at a time, uh, just little little chunks of history as we go. And before we get going into tonight's recipient, which is going to be brought to you by Combat Flip Flops, I do want to kind of give a a quick a quick little background about the Korean War, only because of recent events that have since made this very coincidental that we are going to do this this month. Um, first of all, I will tell you a little bit about Combat Flip Flops. I tell you what, I'm here in in Pennsylvania and. Uh, as true form for Pennsylvania weather. If you don't like it, just wait five minutes. It'll change. We've gone from winter. We get about a week of spring, and now we are right into summer with 80 degrees. And uh, it's a perfect time for me to be sporting my combat flip-flop flopperators. And you should, too. Head on over to combatflipflops.com. Be sure to do some shopping over there. Get all your good stuff that they have to offer. Know that... Whenever you purchase something from them, that some of that money is going to go to just getting good things done. Good things like educating Afghan women and girls and helping clear unexploded landmines and other ordnance in Laos. I mean, wouldn't you want to do a good thing? Well, sometimes you don't have the opportunities to go do those good things, so you give the money to those who can. That's why Combat Flip Flops is helping flip the way wars are won with business, not bullets. Moving here, before we get into the Tale of Honor, a little bit of background about the Korean War. I'm going to give it to you in a nutshell. I'm not a history major. I'm not a history expert. But I kind of want to give you an idea of uh, what we're getting into and why this is very coincidental. Last Friday, the 27th of April, the North and South Korean leaders met and uh, they agreed to sign a formal peace treaty by the end of the year. And uh, that's huge. That's really huge. Uh, It's the first time the North Korean leader has ever stepped foot in South Korea in quite some time. And uh, and actually, to go back a little bit further, in the early 1900s, Korea was under the control of the Japanese Empire. And that took us up to about 1945. The spread of communism was pretty real back then. And uh, when the North Koreans invaded the South Koreans, that's when the kind of as what we know as the North uh, as the Korean War began. And uh, North Korea was backed by the Soviet Union and China, and uh, the South Koreans were primarily backed by the U.S. About ninety percent of their military personnel was backed by us. So uh, why? Well, both the leader of the North Korea and the leader of South Korea, both claim to be the uh, the one true ruler of the Koreans. That's pretty much what it came down to. And uh, we backed the South Koreans because they were not communist, and uh, we wanted to keep the, the threat of communism from spreading, which is why we backed them, along with uh, over tw- the other 20 countries in the UN force. So... There was an armistice that was signed on July 27th, 1953. Both sides agreed to it, and they both signed it, um, but it was not an actual peace treaty. So while the fighting stopped, they didn't actually agree to peace. As weird as that sounds, you would think if fighting stops, that is peace, but apparently not. So technically, the Korean War has been going on this entire time, since 1950. Um... But as far as U.S. action, ours our action officially stopped in, in 1953. So I'm going to be covering those years from 1950 to 1953 for the U.S. recipients of the Medal of Honor. And uh, tonight's episode, episode 94, will be the first of those series.
And now, a tale of honor. George D. Libby was born on the 4th of December, 1919, in Bridgeton, Maine, and enlisted in the U.S. Army in Waterbury, Connecticut. He had served in Europe during World War II, but it was his actions after the Battle of Tejan on the 20th of July, 1950, that would earn him the Medal of Honor. The citation reads, Sergeant Libby distinguished himself by conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity above and beyond the call of duty in action. While breaking through an enemy encirclement, the vehicle in which he was riding approached an enemy roadblock and encountered devastating fire which disabled the truck, killing or wounding all of the passengers except Sergeant Libby. Taking cover in a ditch, Sergeant Libby engaged the enemy and despite the heavy fire crossed the road twice to administer aid to his wounded comrades. He then hailed a passing M5 artillery tractor and helped the wounded aboard. The enemy directed intense small arms fire at the driver, and Sergeant Libby, realizing that no one else could operate the vehicle, placed himself between the driver and the enemy, thereby shielding him while he returned the fire. During this action, he received several wounds in the arms and body. Continuing through the town, the tractor made frequent stops, and Sergeant Libby helped more wounded aboard. Refusing first aid, he continued to shield the driver and returned the fire of the enemy when another roadblock was encountered. Sergeant Libby received additional wounds but held his position until he lost consciousness. Sergeant Libby's sustained heroic actions enabled his comrades to reach friendly lines. His dauntless courage and gallant self-sacrifice reflect the highest credit upon himself and uphold the esteemed traditions of the U.S. Army. George eventually collapsed from blood loss, but his actions allowed for the wounded men to get to safety, and he was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor on the 2nd of August, 1951. George D. Libby is buried in Arlington National Cemetery, Section 34, Lot 1317. And that was a tale of honor. Thank you so much for listening to Tales of Honor podcast. If you like this podcast, please be sure to leave a nice review, a good rating, and tell a friend. And while you're telling them, make sure that you are subscribed to this podcast so you don't miss another episode or any episodes. And make sure your friends don't miss an episode, too. Tell them to subscribe. Simple as that. Have you bought your Tales of Honor podcast t-shirt yet? You should do that while supplies last. Your soft tri-blend t-shirts are available in the store. You can see more information on Facebook, Instagram, and at talesofhonorpodcast.com. If you have any questions or comments, you can send them to talesofhonorpodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, I'm Christoph Ambrose. Thanks for listening.